What's going on, Foot Clan? We're back again because, well, we're always back again. We've got shocking stats on today's show. We're talking about some players that are fantasy relevant today that might be dust in a year from now and a whole lot more on today's show, including some news. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment, and enjoy today's show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Another episode of the podcast, Jason. Well, that's good. We we haven't we haven't gone anywhere. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast back again. Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, Mike, not here today. Somewhere in Mexico, celebrating the birthday mm -hmm. of our very only first producer, Brooks. Brooks' oh, birthday happy today. Happy birthday, Brooks! He's living life. Oh, yeah. Get that camera on you, Brooks. Oh, happy birthday, big guy. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. He is now 55! How do you get, uh, what do you get for a man that has literally everything due to his vast, expansive uh, wealth? Well, what you do is you steal something valuable to him. And return it? And then you return it. Okay. You say, look. You had lost this, but now you have. You may have it back. Yeah, one of them Fabergé eggs or something. Yeah, some kind of probably an heirloom. <laughs> some kind of heirloom. Yeah. Is that what you collect when you're wealthy? Heirlooms. Heirloom. Yeah, it's not even your family. You're Just like, other... I want that family's most precious heirloom. Okay. okay. <laughs> and then you get it. It's a good word. Uh, shocking stats on today's show. Going to walk through some. Uh, well, I said it. Shocking stats. We're going to look at what happened in 2022. Jason, I'm going to get your opinions, your your wizened yes. opinions. Some of these uh, some of these stats might be a little prescriptive or at least indicative of things we can look for next year. Some of these are just cool. Just like, wow, <laughs> let's move on. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I'm Shocking shocked. stat. A uh, couple announcements at the top of the show before we get into the news and get into those shocking stats. The 2023 rookie profiles are hitting the website right now, so some of the articles... I retweeted the C.J. Stroud article by our very own Kyle the Borgogan. I do not want to ever give Kyle on-air credit, um, but Andy was talking up this article. He's like, man, that Kyle's over there grinding. He said it was – I forget. what You you described it in the most eloquent Did terms. Did I? Yes, and I'm hoping that you have a memory I, of Yes, this. I do. I do. I called it exhaustive, not exhausting. Yeah, that's that's what we're trying so, to do here. It it's, tells the story of uh, C.J. Stroud, as only Kyle could tell it. And uh, it's very interesting. You, Kyle, and you can throw the camera back over there, you you came away with, the after you're done watching the tape and you reviewed the games and you talk about it in the article, I believe you said something to the extent of one of the most impressive quarterback prospects you had seen in the last five years. Yeah, against Georgia, he was unbelievable. They should have won that game. Okay, so... This is what I'm talking about. So, I mean, that that feels like a little bit of a, a hot take after you looked over everything. And uh, you've got the Bryce Young one up there as well? Yeah, bets to the Bryce Young. And we'll have all the prospects up within the next couple of weeks. So, uh, thefantasyfootballers.com if you want to read those. The other couple of announcements, the 2023 Ultimate Draft Kit pre-sale is available right now. You can uh, pick it up, ultimatedraftkit.com. If you get it by March 1st, you'll be entered to win a listener league spot. It's going to be the lowest Price, you can get it all summer long. Free digital copy of the book, $15 in gift cards, a bunch of perks just for getting it early. And the Dynasty Pass is available uh, inside the UDK right now with more rookie startup content, Dynasty trade targets, and a lot more. So ultimatedraftkit.com. And then the last one, and again, you're going to have to hit the trumpet for me there, Al. <clears throat> he had to unbox the trumpet. Oh, you said we... Uh, 
we are we are hiring. We made this announcement, I believe, last Thursday. I want to reiterate it. The fantasyfootballers.com slash careers. We are looking for uh, what I would say is like a Patrick Mahomes level talent. Yeah, we're looking for a diamond in the rough, a needle in a haystack, someone that has a lot of experience with social media, with branding, with the future of the platforms, the advertising, really a guru um, that can help take us to the next level who loves fantasy football. And I think one thing we... I heard it too. Yeah, I heard that, Al. Oh, what did I say? It just sounded like platforms. Platforms? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like, and I, you know, it's different. But that's a, not a thing. No, but... But it just sounded like I said the word like you plaid. Said plaid. Okay. But yeah, we're looking for no. If you're Jay Cutler esque in talent, no application. So you're knows. an NFL quarterback. That's good. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. You're not going to the Hall of Fame. But uh, maybe you're working in like a more boring career. Yeah. You are you in the oil industry, <laughs> but high up in social media. Is that is that those those are a thing? You think there's I, one yeah, big social media big oil guy? I don't know if the if big oil. I don't know has, if we, we're really targeting the big oil. No, probably company not. to uh, to steal from. But probably not. But yeah, I get what you're saying. Right. Or and or you run the Chargers uh, social media. Like reach out. <laughs> yeah. So you can learn more. The whole job description uh, spelled out in a slightly easier to understand way at thefantasyfootballers.com slash careers. Is there anything else we need to cover here at the top, Brooksy? You got it all. We already did the mandatory birthday. Congratulations, you made us do. Yeah. I mean, he pays our salary, so right. we, we have to listen to the boss. The only other update um, that I would say we just got back from the FSGA uh, conference. Uh, we had a great time there in Las Vegas, and it was imp it's just important that the Footland knows we want it. We want everything. Everything. I mean, yeah. you know, we're talking bags tournament. We're talking yeah, foosball hole. tournament. You know, a couple industry awards, but those weren't the those weren't the real important things. No, and there was a lot of trash talk appropriately. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, we did that mostly because losing sucks and losers suck as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, so we're winners. We, yeah. So we took it off. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. That's it. That that's concludes. It. Thank you for bringing that up, Jason. Yeah, no Very problem. important. We brought home lots of hardware. In those departments. All right. Who is the player? Here's a quick question for the day. Who is a player that is fantasy relevant today that in one year from now you think will be dust? So completely, you, this show, February 20th of next year, this player is not going to be on any draft boards, but they will be this summer. So I, I, I don't believe they will be off the draft boards. A lot of times people turn to dust when we don't realize it. I, I think that they, will, they could easily be replaced and be a mistake. But the player that came to my mind is a player who I am in on right now for this season, right? Fantasy relevant today. Damian Pierce, I think, has a great season. I, he looked uh, really good for a uh, rookie the, as the rookie running back for the Houston Texans. Damian Pierce was a fourth-round pick. Beat everybody's expectations um, for fantasy football. He he, I, I think he worked his way to the fourth round there too as well. Somewhere uh, higher than I think we thought he would go. And Damian Pierce returned on that value until he got injured in the season. And so going into next year, I do think he's a fine player and will be productive. But this is a guy who was drafted in the fourth round. We bring up draft capital a lot on this show because historically it means a lot. And for a position like running backs, you can have guys, you know, that uh, come out of nowhere and have a great career. I mean, Austin Eckler uh, has unbelievable staying power. Arian Foster, there are examples where it works. But there are far, far more examples where a player comes out and is good, but the team has not invested into them in any kind of major way and so they they aren't seen as a core building block for the team and so the team wants that and ends up replacing that player it's happened over and over and over recent examples uh Philip Lindsay a couple years ago was awesome he was a, a running back one his rookie year he was the running back 19 his sophomore year and then it was like uh yeah we're gonna replace you uh, you're gone, and he was irrelevant, uh, bounced around a couple teams, and was done. James Robinson uh, had an un He's on his way to being done. Unbelievable rookie season, but because he wasn't a, you know, he 
They should have had him just be the dude and then went out and drafted Travis Etienne. Etienne got injured, and so he had a little bit of extra time given to him. But then as soon as Etienne was back, it's like, yeah, you weren't our plan. You did a great job. Pat on the butt. See you later. And even other examples that aren't just undrafted, like Jordan Howard was a fourth-round pick. It was very good. He th That's like the comp to me is a fourth-round pick who comes in, was good for fantasy, was good for their team. And he didn't make it to year four on his rookie deal because they just he was good, and then they, they're like, ah, we're going to replace you. The, the only thing I'll push back on a little of your contention around Damian Pierce is the fact that I think something, I think something has to happen this year, and it doesn't have to be much when you're a fourth round draft pick, but something has to happen in the negative sense to to push him into the dust category. You know, to be fair to James Robinson, there was a an Achilles tear in the midst of this sure. uh, this situation. I think if what you said at the beginning of Damian Pierce is going to have a great year is true, I don't think he'll be dust if he had a great year. But if he has a, a mediocre year, an up-and-down year, if he shares the backfield, right. you're, you have a new coaching staff, if there are some bumps, like if you have, dra if you have high draft capital at, at running back and there's some bumps in the road, you get more opportunities. If you have low draft capital, low investment, not the same coaching staff, and you hit a few bumps, it doesn't take much to have you pushed out of relevance. Exactly right. And the injuries are probably the thing that, you know, in the future, when if if this were to come true, you might be able to say, oh, that's not fair. He got injured. But that's the point. Like, Brees Hall got injured. He is not being replaced. They spent a first round draft pick on him. Rashad Penny got time and time and time again to come back and be the starter. He never really. Did it, but it, that was because he was a first round draft pick. When all these guys who are third, fourth, fifth round draft picks get an injury and someone else comes in, you, you can just, you're allowed to be replaced. Uh, the player that I will bring up is also a running back, and I'm just not sure what the path forward for him is going to be. And that is Devin Singletary, Devin Singletary the running back for the Buffalo Bills. He is a free agent. And so there are two scenarios that I think can transpire here. He could sign a deal to return to Buffalo. I don't think the money will be significant if that is the direction it goes. I think it could be shorter term. You have a talent in James Cook behind him. If he goes somewhere else, the money might be a little bit bigger than what he got in Buffalo, but I don't know that Devin Singletary has the kind of uh, profile, I think, to be the centerpiece of a backfield. And so generally players like that, when they depart, it's not – greener pastures it is an opportunity someplace else I mean I can think of uh why don't we go to Damian Williams departing from uh what Kansas City and opportunities that he has had there were teams that said hey you're going to be a part of our future you're going to be part of this backfield but you're not going to be the whole thing and I just wonder you know what's a better scenario for Devin Singletary than being on one of the best offenses in football in Buffalo I don't think that there's one out there for a team that's going to pay him and if he stays there, I think he's going to be underutilized. So I think that this is one of those players that, regardless of the offseason contract situation, there's a chance that we don't see a lot of him in future fantasy drafts. Sure. I think that makes sense. He, he's, uh, he's not that archetype that you know becomes the centerpiece of anyone's offense. Into the news we go. News and notes from around the league. The Washington Commanders have hired Eric Bieniemy as their offensive coordinator. So, looks like the Chiefs will be going back to Matt Nagy at their offensive coordinator position. Eric Bieniemy, lateral move in title, but a different opportunity. A lot of people have come out and said, why in the world would he do this? You're departing the world champions. You have a solid role, solid opportunity to be a part of a winner. He wants to be a head coach. He has applied and, and been given many, many interviews, and he has never been able to, despite winning Super Bowls, despite having the best offense, he doesn't land that job in part because it's hard to know. Like, okay, everyone everyone who's a, a good OC there does well or is just the OC does well because you've got Andy Reid and you've got Patrick Mahomes. Like, yeah, you, of course you're going to do well. And he doesn't call the plays. Andy Reid calls the plays. So this is a position where he's saying, hey, the Washington Commanders, they are they do not have a prolific offense. They do not have a prolific quarterback. If I can go there and prove that I can take this offense 
forward and progress it and and develop a quarterback. Hopefully, Sam How um, that was nice. Thank you. Then now it's saying, okay, th this guy deserves his shot. I believe in him, not just in Patrick Mahomes. And I'm guessing they paid for it. You know, I, it, we forget sometimes that these um, offensive coordinators, it's not just role and, and, and situation. It's like, this, this is a job. You know, it's like if, if one job is offering, I don't know the contract situation. Did he but get assistant head coach as well in that title in Washington? I'll have to look it up. Take take a look at that. I think he might have been given that as well. Yeah that that would uh, yeah that would assistant be a very head coach. Ron Rivera uh, thing to do. Yeah, assistant head coach and offensive coordinator. So a bit of a title upgrade opportunity to go there. Yeah, I mean, and that's great. I'm happy uh, for Eric Bieniemy. I hope he does well. I think he is better than he has been given credit for, and now he gets an opportunity to prove it. But he is not the offensive coordinator that is the most fun to talk about. That's easy as one, two, three, Mr. JBC himself, oh, Jim Bob Cooter. Jim Bob Cooter! He's back, baby. Oh, yes. Offensive coordinator of the Colts. So he'll be holding the clipboard for uh, Shane Steichen in Indianapolis. So congratulations, JBC. I just like his name. Yeah, they, I mean, that's really all it was, huh? That uh, if, if Jim Bob Cooter was named Larry so, Williams, yeah. I'd be like... All right, well, what has he done with his career? Let me look and investigate. Now I just want to be thrilled because of Jim Bob Cooter. Formerly of uh, Lions fame. That is right. Where he was, he ran the offense that was 20th, 21st, 13th, and 24th in total yards. Well, he'll just be helping Sykin. So he'll, yeah. he's in the B enemy role there. Packers and Aaron Jones agreed on a restructured deal for 2023. 11 million salary for the 2023 season. Aaron Jones will be back. Yep. Do so, you have any uh, reaction to that? Um, it's just good news to have. I would say this restructure makes me, uh, you know, I believe it's a two years left on his deal, but this feels to me like it's going to be one last hurrah. If I'm a dynasty manager, you get a new deal. Well, sometimes that uh, that can bump a player's value up. He's the type of player, uh, along with this next type, this next player that we will be talking about in a minute where I'm looking in a dynasty league to move on from this age running back. Well, we knew in the next player is Alvin Kamara. Him and three accomplices were indicted on conspiracy to commit battery. There's a court date for March 2nd. This is the Vegas incident in the 2022 Pro Bowl weekend. He could end up facing league discipline heading into the new year. And like Jason said, we're going to talk about Kamara and Aaron Jones in our shocking stats segment. Isaiah Hodgins is back. One-year contract. Well-deserved. And this can't be true. This is true. This is actually I'm true. I'm finding this out right now. Yeah, I, we, I got the alert yesterday, and my goodness, the dude is crazy. The Cardinals, they still have Robbie Anderson on their roster? No, they do not have Robbie Anderson on their roster because Robbie Anderson does not exist. Great. Robbie Anderson has legally changed his name to Chosen Anderson. Chosen as in he is the chosen one. Chosen Anderson. <laughs> what? Uh, okay. He first changed his name from Robbie to Robbie. He it was like, look, I don't like this Y at the end of my name. I'm going to formally change my name from Robbie with a Y to Robbie with an I-E. And that wasn't good enough. When a player shifts from production, like stat production on the field, to name changes, quantity of name changes, there's a problem. Yeah. I, the, historically speaking, very bad for fantasy football. <laughs> yeah. We've looked at the numbers. Yeah. All right. No other news. Other Chosen Anderson, the last one there, Brooksy. That's the last big news we got. Oh, boy. All right. Quick break. Back with those shocking stats. <laughs> Chosen Anderson, huh? Chosen Anderson. Have you thought about um, like a midlife crisis name change of any any sort there? I'm going to start thinking about it. I didn't realize we could just pick. I thought we had to pick a name. B. Dot shimmy more. Uh, you know, I feel like I want a verb. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> give, give it some. The chef? That's not a verb, but that would be a great name. That's my pickleball nickname. Because you spend true. a lot of time in the kitchen? Uh, you, there's a kitchen at least. No, in real life. 
Yeah. Oh, yes. 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 I love the kitchen. Favorite room in the house. Shimmy. Well, that's not true. Bathroom, toilet, but uh, second favorite kitchen. Shimmy G. Kitchen comes first. Bathroom (laughs) comes second. I like that. Shimmy G. Shimmy G. That's good. Yeah. All right. Moving on. How'd you do that? It's actually, I'm not even mad. That's amazing. All right, our team dug up some shocking stats from 2022. Let's kick it off here with uh, one titled The Beginning of the End. We mentioned during the Truth episodes that over the last two years, it's kind of sad. Yeah. Alvin Kamara, six total rushing touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what, Aaron Jones? Six total rushing touchdowns in the last two years. Wow. If you would like to know... Which players have more rushing touchdowns than these guys? I will give you the answer. Cam Akers, Clyde Edwards-Alaire. This is my favorite. Sam Darnold. (laughs) More rushing touchdowns than Aaron Jones or Alvin Kamara. Chuba Hubbard, Boston Scott. So it has been a rough couple of years for these guys. Um, You know, people want to know what they do in dynasty leagues, keeper leagues. They're back-to-back in our startup rankings right now in the Dynasty Pass. They're both uh, north of 27 years old. We just talked about the restructure for Aaron Jones. Alvin Kamara, who's the quarterback going to be? And we, Aaron we've Jones, actually who's seen, the quarterback going to yeah, be? Yeah, we've, we've seen decline, I think, specifically in Kamara's case of just efficiency numbers. Are the You talked about in Dynasty moving on from these players, but is that a realistic goal? Are there Are there other... Are there other teams that are going to be caught more up in the name of, of 2017, 2018, 2019 versions of these players? Yeah, I, I do think they're absolutely movable assets. Most leagues in dynasty uh, formats, you've got a, a handful of teams that are really desperate for running backs. And even though we value youth and we care about that, Alvin Kamara and Aaron Jones, they carry weight. They've been top running backs over the last couple of years. Their names are good, but these are two uh, running backs whose kind of r- rushing style, body type, they're pass catchers who are, you know, they they have always made their hay in efficiency metrics, not in usually getting the ball 350 times and being a bruiser. You know, Aaron Jones is like 208 pounds. So we've shared the truth that touchdowns are not a sticky stat. There are players, uh, what, no matter your body size, that can go from 20 touchdowns to six touchdowns the next year, and that just happens. And so you can say, okay, he, you know, they've, they've not had a bunch of rushing touchdowns. I'm not going to bet against that. I'm going to expect those to come back. But when you combine the fact that they are getting older, their teams are getting worse, their efficiency is going down, and their body style is not one that you would expect a ton of rushing touchdowns, I'm, I'm betting against bright futures ahead for either one of these guys and because they have big names yeah yeah I mean I think you can get something for them well I think it's it's fair to share the kind of it's a massive change in Kamara's production historically like in the breeze years it was it was a touchdown every or a, every 15 carries every 14 carries back in 2020 it was 11 every 11.7 carries over the last two years it's every 77. Point two carries. A gross. That's uh, that's shocking. That's uh, seven times worse. And then for Aaron Jones, I mean, it went from tw- uh, one rushing touchdown every twenty two carries in twenty twenty, one every fifteen carries in twenty nineteen, to now one every sixty four carries in twenty twenty one and twenty twenty two. And it seems as though Aaron Rodgers will not be his quarterback this year. Yeah, I mean, and that's who, concerning. That that's certainly not a a done deal, but it does feel like it's leaning that way. the The quarterback situation for both teams is really really dicey, and you've got a very deep class of rookie running backs coming in. I, I don't think the Packers would go after one. They just restructured um, Aaron Jones, and they uh, have AJ Dillon there. But the Saints will probably use a pick on a running back. I think they need to. You're going to have Kamara potentially suspended this year as well missing uh, a game to six games based on uh you know what we shared in the news so you you've got a situation here where Kamara could easily start a downward trend quickly I am curious what you would accept for a player like Alvin Kamara in a dynasty league because I can pull up some names and we can look at where you're you're drawing that line 
but I just don't know what would make that tempting to someone else. Like you're you're not getting a player like I'd assume like a Ramondre Stevenson. I, you would accept Ramondre for a I would. I would rather have Ramondre than either of those guys. But I, and and I think there are leagues where you can get that done. Not all leagues, because some you know it's in dynasty when you give advice, it's funny because it's very different. People, certain players really focus on age, and others really don't. Some players really focus on draft picks, and others very much don't. Brooks hasn't had a draft pick. Since he entered this league, he just wants vets. He'll trade them all. He'll burn them. He doesn't. When is the lot... Brooks over the last three years? How many rookie picks have you actually made? Maybe a pick or two. Yeah, ma I think maybe one, maybe zero three rounders. Yeah, yeah, later picks. Would you accept? Let me let me give you another name here. I brought up Ramondre. What if you go down a tier? What if you go to like a Miles Sanders, the free agent? With the free agency looming, I, I would not prefer to have Miles Sanders, even though he is younger. And, and Rashad White. Um, Rashad White, I would probably rather have him going forward. Damian Pierce. Damian Pierce was an interesting name. That was the first one that came to mind. I, I think most people that drafted Damian Pierce and had the success from where they got him aren't going to give him up uh, for these guys. But sometimes when you are... When you're making this trade for, with a veteran running back, you're probably not getting a running back. You're trading him to a team that is desperate for that need. That's what you need to focus on. So I think when you're trading cross positional, yeah, trade. you're going cross positionally. You're going and getting a quarterback in a single quarterback league. You're trading him for um, a, a, Deontay a, Johnson, a younger sure, like you would take Deontay Johnson. I would look at saying like, oh, someone like Christian Kirk's 26 years old. On a good offense going forward, if I need wide receiver help, that's a way to you know get maybe a twenty-five year old Hollywood Brown. If Absolutely. with the thought that uh, DeAndre yes. Hopkins is leaving, I would love that one. All right, here's your second shocking stat of the day: the Lions inside the five. We're going to talk about the Detroit Lions. Thirty-two of the Lions' fifty-two touchdowns came inside the five. That's sixty-two percent. We know about Jamal Williams already. That was uh, a league leading fourteen rushing touchdowns inside the five. In fact, he had 30 rush attempts inside the five, which is the most since 1994. So I wouldn't expect that to be super sticky for Jamal Williams next year. But yeah, 1994 being the first year the NFL started tracking that stat. So prop, I mean, maybe the most maybe all -time. forever. Uh, and but here's here's something wild. Jared Goff had 16 passing touchdowns inside the five. Yeah, it, it's wild to realize how often this team. There's a trip wire. <laughs> Right at the like six five yard line, they fall down inside of there and then get all their production. Now, is it that? Is it that, or is it they don't have plays to the end zone, like from you know? Yeah, I just it is a crazy combination when you look at Williams and Goff's numbers. Their offense was insanely efficient inside the five. Um, so how how do you look at that kind of strange year for the Lions? I know we we believe in the offense, we believe in Amon Ra. There's the questions around DeAndre Swift, obviously, but you know one thing that happens when you end up with this many kind of, you know, five zone touchdowns is you didn't have, you didn't have the breakaway play that made it all the way to the end zone. You worked yourself down the field. Yeah, and, and uh, you know some of that will be presumably and or hopefully, if you uh, are a fan of the Lions or of high scoring affairs, will be undone by. Uh, Jameson Williams coming in and being able to take a bomb touchdown away and you know stop a drive from getting to the five you're you're always going to bet against any kind of crazy anomalous shocking stat from repeating the following year but I think what it does highlight is how strong this offense was to be able to just continue to march all the way down when you get in the red zone it's it's difficult. The, the field shrinks, and so you, that's where kind of the smash mouth football. That's where it actually does turn at some point when you get closer to the end zone. You know, analytics is very clear. Passing the ball is so much more valuable than running the ball. But it does flip uh, where when you get close to you know, and the field shrinks, running the ball. That's where you need to do it to to cross into a team that is, uh, you know bending and not breaking versus getting into the end zone and this offensive line 
is absolutely outstanding. I would expect the Lions offense to be better next year than it was this year, and they were pretty dang good. It's funny because you remember the Jared Goff story when Todd Gurley was his running back in, in Los Angeles. He had these inefficient numbers where he wasn't throwing as many touchdowns because Gurley was scoring them all. It's strange that he would have the you know the second most touchdowns within the five and still have a hyper efficient running back inside the five. Like they both worked out for Jared Goff. Yeah, it's just a lot of opportunities, a lot of this offensive line imposing its will and getting you know grinding its way down to the five yard line. All right, this one is Jalen making the jump, which is you know Jalen Waddle. He went from a yard per reception of 9.8 to a league-leading 18.1. The story of Jalen Waddell's rookie, career, uh, rookie season was being that PPR, dink and dunk, um, opportunistic, you know, just always available for Tua, and then he jumps to 18.1. So for I think one thing that comes out of this is this precedent of, like, it is possible for the characteristically – low yards per catch player to have a new head coach come in mm -hmm. who changes the offense mm -hmm. and it changes the actual result for the player. I mean, going to 18.1, we knew that Jalen Waddle was a fast wide receiver, an explosive wide receiver. It's very clear that in year one, that wasn't the way he was being used. Well, here's the thing. I, I don't think it wasn't in, entirely scheme there were so many plays, a little crossing, where he just got caught over and over and over in his rookie season. And I remember saying to people, like, this isn't going to happen forever. He's too fast to never, ever have a breakaway touchdown. We kept calling for his rookie year, like, this is the week where he's going to get a breakaway touchdown. Just impossible for him to never, ever break all the way away. He's got that kind of talent. But you you talk about the, the coaching change, the scheme change, the situation going into another year uh, in a new – you know, obviously uh, new to the NFL here. That to me, with lightning speed, screams one player who can. So another another waddle. Yeah, someone that can follow in his footsteps and do it this year. Yes, sir. And it's Hollywood. Push it. Don't oh, push man. it, man. Oh, well, I, mean, I didn't man. know what you were oh, setting up for me. Mercy. Don't even worry about it. Oh, just let it go. I need that drop. I, oh. I feel. I feel let down. Hollywood. There, thank you. That is – everyone is worse off for that drop happening that late. Um, So you're, you're talking about Hollywood Brown, 25 years old. He was at 10.6 a catch in Arizona. It is interesting to me, though, that, that part of the process for Waddle you have to attribute to Tyreek Hill. Ta you talk about getting caught. I mean – Sure. Probably not caught by I – mean, you had more guys running – after you last year than you did this year with Tyreek Hill, Hollywood could actually lose DeAndre Hopkins this offseason. He could definitely lose DeAndre Hopkins, have more coverage focused on him, but the way that he was utilized, um, they, they didn't play games together this year, right? So it's not like it's going to be a big change. I believe there was one single game where Kyler played with Hopkins and Hollywood Brown. So, the, the, you know. But that's almost my point. Is, well, no. Is, is that he had to end up being the short yardage PPR guy. But I don't believe that that was the right way to use him. Cliff Kingsbury setting up all these little screens and basically these, these short, quick passes. We would watch these games as Cardinal fans and just be disgusted by the little dinks and dunks nonstop, never pushing the ball down the field. And I don't think that that's going to – happen again uh with a new regime coming in it's uh kind of what we saw from hollywood in 2021 in baltimore before he departed he was at 11.1 .1 a catch which we were disappointed then because mm -hmm. it had gone down from 13.3 the touchdown totals the big plays uh this year will be very interesting he has i think he's going to be no matter how much we talk about him i think he will be undervalued going into the draft people have been around the block with hollywood brown enough years to where, uh, you know, unless we see some signs, I think, in training camp and in the preseason that change opinions strongly, I think he will be an undervalued type of player, maybe in the Christian Kirk kind of draft range of last year. So that's a possible name. A couple other low-efficiency players to keep an eye on with changing situations. Offensive coordinator in Dallas is changing. 
And Michael Gallup was at 10.9 last year, also coming off the injury. And then Michael Pittman was at 9.3 yards per catch. Pittman is very interesting. And me. you have a brand new head coach in Shane Steichen. Yeah, the, the, the Pittman change could be dramatic because the way they utilized him, and, and I don't think it was any fault of Michael Pittman, right? You know, Michael Pittman ran the routes he was told to run. He doesn't get to go there and just say, I'm only running these short seven-yard out routes over and over and over and over and over and over. That's what he was asked to do, and he was okay with it. I mean, he caught 70% of his passes, uh, you, you know, was – was good for I what called, they, I call them handoffs for in that range. Sure, he they was, were basically handoffs. He was good for what they asked him to do. What they asked him to do was not good for fantasy football. Not good for the Colts offense. Now he's not the burner. And usually when you look at yards per reception, that's not a sticky number either. It, it goes back and forth between people. Um, it's, it's, so long as you're not Deshaun Jackson, it doesn't always stay high. But the years where it is high, it's because of breakaway touchdowns. It's all of a sudden you got an eighty yarder. Well, your yards per reception number is going to look real good at the end of the season when you get one or two of those, and I don't see that in the cards for Pittman, but I I do think Pittman could be used, you know, go from nine yards per reception to 13 and actually, I don't know, I've got maybe take a couple shots 20 yards down the field. I've got some numbers on Pity City that was going to be part of another uh, section here. He was number one in snap rate amongst all wide receivers. Seems good. Yeah. Third most routes run. Heck yeah. Second most route wins. He's good. Eighth most receptions in the NFL. Perfect. That That's great. Here's the bad news. Lowest receiving yards ever for a wide receiver with 99 plus receptions in a season. Lowest uh, PPR fantasy points ever for a wide receiver with 99 receptions in a season. Uh, this is the final year of his rookie deal. It, it will be very interesting to see what kind of situation he ends up in. And and if you have, like I know you have your thoughts about Deontay Johnson. I feel like he was a victim of circumstance as well this year. And here you have Michael Pittman who was a victim of circumstance. We don't know. I mean, the Colts are one of the prime candidates to trade up and get a Bryce Young or a C.J. Stroud. So yeah, the Colts, the Colts will have a rookie quarterback. I, everybody knows that this year, even if they don't trade up, they're at, well, then they're what? at four. They, they're going to Levis have Levis or Richardson. Yeah. I would be shocked if Richardson went number four, but that would be awesome. Uh, well, I, I mean, I'm just giving you the two names. If Stroud and young should be gone by the time they're on the clock, there's almost no chance that if they don't trade up, they're getting one of those two players. Yeah. You're saying if two teams trade, up well, instead there there's just you got the texans at two they're going to take a quarterback yeah and arizona then, or or the bears will trade that spot away yeah. so i'm just i was just putting the names out there sure. if they don't trade up which i think they will i think the colts will be the team to trade up but it if it's a rookie quarterback you're going to have doubts about pity city for sure yeah because i don't it, think it he hits be... those reception totals he won't hit those reception totals with a rookie unless the rookie comes in and is mind-blowingly great. You know, if Bryce Young is everything that people say he's um, made up to be and goes number one if they trade up for that spot, maybe he does make them better. But I will be betting against it. I will be drafting against the breakout because, historically speaking, even great all-time quarterbacks, they're not great for fantasy wide receivers in year one there are some outliers you got Justin Herbert coming in having a great fantasy production year one but really even with good successful fantasy quarterbacks in rookie years they don't usually support great uh wide receivers the one player that I can remember in recent history that I was excited about doing that was Cam Newton's rookie season when everybody, you know, when he came out in that first, we were at that first game, I think, with mm -hmm. Steve Smith. And, it was against so the Cardinals. It's been a while, but let's talk Travis Kelsey. Shocking stat number one, he hasn't played a true road playoff game since the 2015 season. Wow. They're, they're, I mean, look, I'm, I will say it. I think the Kansas City Chiefs are a very good team. Yeah. They're back up on the uh, back wall here. Oh, that's Congratulations, right. Congratulations, Kansas City fans. Because... This year, Kansas you are City. the champs. We already had that one in the back. Right. We the, did not have to buy a new Kansas City sign. Um, so, you know, 
thank you for going out and saving us the twenty nine dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it's real, real big of you. All right, here are the fantasy finishes of Travis Kelsey and what they equated to for a wide receiver. Okay, because we've we've run we've we've gone over the tight end finishes. It's always one, except for in twenty twenty one where he was number two. So he's Mark. always the number one or number two tight end in the last, since twenty fifteen. Here are the wide receiver finishes: nineteen, twelve, nine, ten, four, ten, and then this year he would have been the wide receiver five. How is he? Like a bottle of wine. How is he getting better this late into his career? The last three years, he would be the wide receiver 4, 10, and 5. 152 it, it, targets this year was the most of his career. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah, so that's a nice wine. Yeah, nice wine. 110 receptions uh, most of his career. He was unstoppable. And, and every single week, you would think – Okay, teams are going to key on them. Uh, you know, the Super Bowl, the, they've got two weeks to prepare. They've got personnel to do it. There is no personnel to do it. No one can do it. And what's crazy is you look at some of these plays where he gets open, you're like, why were the Eagles, why were any team, why did they put that guy on him? And it's not that they put that guy on him. It's that Andy Reid got that guy on him. By creative offensive design, it's like what you see with Cooper Cup and the Los Angeles Rams where it's like he always gets a linebacker on him. It's like, sorry, you, you, you're done. Looking at the wide receiver finish, because I know Kelsey's average draft position will be a debate all offseason. Right, right now on underdog, on the way too early best ball drafts, he's going at the four spot. Four overall? Yeah. Well, I was going to ask you, what does his wide receiver fantasy finish have to be to justify being a top 10 pick? And I guess the answer right now is he's number four. I mean, uh, if he was the wide receiver 10, if he put up the points that the wide receiver 10 did at the tight end position, he's absolutely worth first round pick. Top 10 pick, no no problem. What's the, like, you look at a, uh, our league, right? What's the highest you think? In a redraft format, let me just put it that way. Where are you taking – how high could you take Kelsey and not be shocked? If someone took him uh, – I think you're I think you're talking right about there. I think Four? You're, yeah, four or five. I, I won't be surprised next year. I don't believe I will be drafting him there. And we'll see if the, the hype – with the playoffs and the, the you know the the recency bias of watching him dominate over the last month while most players aren't playing, maybe that fades away a little bit. Hype gets up for other players and he ends up at the back of round one where he spends most of his uh, seasons being drafted. And uh, you know you'll you'll toy with that, but I I will say this: the middle of the first round is the worst I can remember it in a long time. Usually. You've got a handful of players that you're really, really excited about, but you get to the middle of the first round, and there's question marks on a lot of those guys now. You know, you've you've got Derrick Henry sitting there where it's like, mm, I don't know, he's older. Let me let me make a a case for Kelsey that has maybe not been made. He plays every single game every single year. You talk about the most painful experience a first round draft pick can give you sometimes is what Jonathan Taylor did this past year, what Christian McCaffrey did in years past. Travis Kelsey hasn't missed a game, I think, since 2014. He might he played 15 games in 2017, and I don't know if that one game was because they were holding him out or not. Kyle, do you even know? I'll look it up. His average since 2014 is 15.9 games per season. Um, but he doesn't miss time. Like, is his – you know, you talk about he getting didn't. the wide receiver – he didn't miss time. You have just I can't believe you're doing oh, this right now. Oh, don't do that to me. You are you are absolutely injuring Travis Kelsey with your words right now, Mr. Fantasy Reaper. You can't hurt Travis Kelsey. It is very difficult to He's hurt. He's a Greek Zeus. god. Uh, but how much do you value that? I mean, when you talk about the decision making between one or two players at the five spot one of them has a higher odds of getting hurt. I mean, when you have played, what is that? Uh, almost a decade without missing time. I feel like that shows you that this player knows how to take care of their body. Mm -hmm. The way they're exposed in the offense is not, they're not vulnerable to injury. 
Yeah, I mean, you you watch someone like Gronk, who was great in his heyday, versus Travis Kelsey, and it's not just a uh, results thing where you go, Gronk missed games and Kelsey didn't. You watch the process. You watch the plays and the tackles. We talked about in Gronk's heyday, it just looks like he's getting blowed up every, you know, just ragdolled the way that he would put his body yeah, in harm's way. it's a crash test situation every time he's hit. And you don't see that with Travis Kelsey. You, you, Travis Kelsey is is either being put in positions to not take that punishment or he's smart with how he gets it. But, that, but I mean, he's, he's 33 and he's fine. He's dominant. He cannot be stopped. But can't do it forever. Well, another thing that stands out is if there was like a great free agent wide receiver crew this year, You'd be like, ah, oh, the Chiefs are a great target mm -hmm. for that. Or even a a, a, a really deep uh, a group of elite first-round wide receivers, but I don't see that personally either. So the chances that the Chiefs uh, – I'll put it this way. The, chance that the chances that the Chiefs find a primary target this offseason are zero. I think they Would are – Would you agree with that? To find a new primary target. I, I think it's probably 5%. They're not in a position where they're going to go trade for a stud. They just traded a stud away. And the only way that it happens is an outside shot for someone like Jackson Smith and Jigba falling because he was injured in his final uh, season. And he, maybe he is the dude that was there with Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave and was a, you know, was thought of as the best of the three wide receivers on the field and if, a ppr type of guy Yeah, if he fell or if somehow Kadarius tony got fully healthy but I, those are those are long odds long shots whereas travis kelsey is a very very large bullseye they just paint the entire target red and say hit the bullseye it's all a bullseye it's been a it's been a heck of a run for Kelsey. I mean, nine years of being a 127 plus target type of player. Um, no one's ever doubted you, Travis, even though you claim that everyone doubted you. We know that you're very good. So I just want to get that out there. Although maybe the doubt is key to the I, success. I want to rewind there a little bit. I had doubt. I had doubt this last year. I really did. And I shared that doubt. And so I'll take my lumps because I thought uh, – Busted. Yeah, busted indeed. I, I thought this could be the beginning of the end for him as defenses are able to key on him without Travis Kelsey. He's 33 years old, a little bit older. I mean, there were, there were things that I thought that were so stupid, so dumb, because um, he was unstoppable, and he beat the tar out of everyone. Yeah, I hope we get a couple more years of it. Me too. Because we, we won't have one that – it comes along like Travis Kelsey for a while. Mike and I need to go four titles in a row oh, with boy. Kelsey. Oh, boy. Champ, 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 champ. Champ, 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 champ. How do you feel about that, Kyle? You excited for the prospects of champ, 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 champ? Their team's really old, by the way. We are really old, but Derrick Henry and Travis Kelsey, we, we keep talking. It's funny because Is Mike he gonna and I. Have like a, are you going to have a dark period? <laughs> are you going to enter <laughs> yes. the dark ages? Because at this point, you so, can't abandon them. Exactly. You this can't is, rebuild now. So what's funny is. I, I won back-to-back -back championships a couple years ago in our dynasty league, but I recognized my team wasn't really good enough to to go. So I kind of tore it down for the last two years a little bit, built up assets. Now ready I'm coming, for another run. I'm ready for another run because that's kind of how I view dynasty. Take you take your windows and then get out before it's too late. This is where you trade Alvin Kamara. You trade uh, Aaron Jones. You make sure you capitalize on those assets before they run out. You know, it got something for uh, Julio before he ran out. But with our team, with three championships in a row, we've talked. Mike and I have said we can't do it. We cannot trade Derrick Henry. I would usually trade Derrick Henry, trade Travis Kelsey, try to get something plus youth so that I can rebuild on the fly. We are going to ride this thing into the ground, and it's going to be bad when it's over. Got we've got no depth behind these old men, but we're going to – come on, one more. Oh, you're winning it. Trim, 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 trim. They can't be stopped. Trim, 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 trim. I thought Kyle was the guy to do it, and he couldn't do it. Yeah, it'll be Andy Schneider, to be honest, because his team's unbelievable. No, it won't. You're gonna win again. It'll be me. All right, that is it for today's show. UltimateDraftKid.com. If you want to get a part of uh, jump into the Dynasty Pass, UltimateDraftKid.com. We'll catch you on Thursday. Take care.
Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.